So I'm going to work an example of an LR filter uh, that's configured as a high-pass filter. And we're going to try to find the transfer function of this filter. So the transfer function is basically uh, a function that relates the output and magnitude and phase to the input magnitude and phase. Uh, and it applies only for sinusoidal steady state problems. So in the sinusoidal steady state, uh, you remember we can model it as just a DC problem, but where we have a complex input and a complex output voltage. And instead of resistances, we have impedances. So we have uh, J omega L for the inductor's impedance and R for the resistor's impedance. And because it's just a DC network, we can just use our voltage divider relation. So we have J omega L over J omega L plus R, and we end up with um, the output voltage. The transfer function is the complex ratio of these uh, two complex amplitudes, so V out over V in, and it's just going to be the voltage divider relation. If we divide both sides by R, we get this, and uh, then we do a substitution to make it a little simpler to read. Uh, we use this omega b, uh, which is r over l, to rewrite it as j omega over omega b over j omega over omega b plus 1. And this form invites us to divide into three limits. A one where omega is much less than omega b, so this is going to be small here. A one where omega equals omega b, and one where omega is much larger than omega b. And in these limits, we can approximate h. Uh, first of all, when omega is small, you can see that uh, this term it doesn't play a major role here because omega over omega b is very small. So you, the denominator is going to look basically like 1, and we're just going to get the numerator, j omega over omega b. When omega equals omega b, well, this j is just times j times 1, and it's actually an exact solution j over j plus 1. And when omega is much larger than omega b, uh, the J term in the den denominator will dominate, the plus 1 isn't going to have much effect, and you're going to end up with something that's approximately 1 with a little bit of a complex number there, but not much. So, so there's a few other terms that are convenient to calculate to try to think about what this means. So the magnitude of the transfer function is just the ratio of the V in and V out magnitudes, or sorry, rather ratio V out and V in. Um, so that's worth knowing. It basically tells you, is V out small? Is it big? What is it? When omega is small, it's telling us that it's going to be small, omega over omega b. We just take the magnitude by just absolute valuing this. Um, when omega is equal to omega b, we take the magnitude of this ratio. Well, j, magnitude of j is 1. Magnitude of j plus 1 is just the hypotenuse of a 1, 1 right triangle, so it's squared of 2. So it's 1 over square root of 2, and obviously the magnitude of 1 is 1. The argument uh, of H tells us the phase shift between the output and the input. And so here, the phase shift is going to be the argument of that complex number. Well, J is just on the imaginary axis of the complex plane, so its phase is pi over 2. This quotient is a little trickier to figure out. Uh, you get pi over 2 from the no numerator, and the denominator is a 45-degree um, triangle. So it has a phase of pi over 4, and so you have pi over 2 minus pi over 4, and you end up with a phase of pi over 4. And then finally, this is just on the real axis, so its phase is 0. Uh, it's also convenient to take the logarithm, uh, that allows us to sort of see the behavior of everything in a single graph. So taking the log of h of j omega, um, we get a log of omega minus log of omega b. This is just a constant, we can kind of ignore it. The main thing here is that uh, it goes like log of omega, and you'll see why that's important in a second. The second uh, limit here where omega equals omega b, we take the logarithm of that and we get about minus 0.15. And finally, the log of one is zero. Now, by convention, um, when people look at this logarithm, they typically multiply it by 20 when they're dealing with voltages, multiply it by 10 when they're dealing with powers. So uh, if you multiply it by 20, you get minus 3 dB. So that minus 0.15 in the ratio corresponds to, uh, in the log of, log of the ratio corresponds to 3 dB, and corresponds to 1 over square root of 2 in terms of the actual ratio of the input and the output. So now we can look at what a graph would look like, we can just basically 
put these values, these logarithmic values, on a graph of log of h over log of omega. And uh, what you'll see is in the low frequency limit, because it just goes like log o omega here, it's got a slope of 1. So in the low frequency limit, it has a slope of 1, some intercept that we're not going to worry about. At omega b, it has a value of minus 0.15, or 3 dB if you want to multiply by 20. And at high frequencies, it has a, a value of 0. So you notice 0 is not down here, it's up here. And the key frequency here is the break frequency, which is R over L, and that's where um, it switches between these two behaviors. And you can see from this why we call it a high pass filter. It's because low frequencies get attenuated, but high frequencies uh, pass with no attenuation. Similarly here, if you look at the phase, at low frequencies, there's a phase shift of pi over 2, meaning the, um, the output voltage is pi over 2 shifted relative to the input. At the break frequency, there's a pi over 4 shift, and then above the break frequency, there's no phase shift. So by looking at the transfer function, and only at the transfer function, we can get a quick idea about how the circuit works exactly and what happens to the phases of signals that are passing through the circuit. We don't need to go through a full detailed analysis taking the real parts of things and um, figuring out the actual functions for the output voltage. And that's why these transfer functions are so convenient.